some 2,000 years ago, on a summer day in 79 AD. A sudden disaster struck an unsuspecting city located near one of the major trading ports of the Roman Empire. As the largest volcano on the Italian peninsula erupted, the entire city was wiped out overnight, buried under volcanic ash. The city's name was Pompeii. When its excavation began almost 1,700 years later, what came to light astonished the world. Under the volcanic ash, the city had been beautifully preserved, a time capsule that revealed centuries later what town life had been like at the height of the Roman imperial rule. Not only were the city's buildings perfectly preserved, volcanic ash also sealed the bodies of its residents who failed to escape and their anguished figures give today's viewers a very vivid picture of the disaster. There was another intriguing discovery. On this wall, there is a seven feet long graffiti. The writing was scratched into the wall by people who lived 2,000 years ago. Many graffiti can be found on Pompeii's walls. They give testimony to its inhabitants' thoughts and draw a vivid picture of their daily lives. Some messages are between lovers. Remember the dances we enjoyed together. What were the changes the Roman Empire brought to the ancient world? How did its unprecedented prosperity affect people's lives? In this program, the Roman Empire looks at the bright and dark side of Roman imperial rule as can be gleaned from the graffiti discovered in the ruins of Pompeii. This is the Via Appia, the highway that connects Rome to southern Italy. For three hours, the road runs through undulating green fields that stretch into the distance on both sides. Since ancient times, the region has been known as the granary of Italy. It produces a wide variety of crops in great abundance. It is under this fertile land that ruins of an old city were discovered in the 18th century. The ruins of Pompeii, the ancient Roman city that vanished overnight in a volcanic eruption. The volcano, Mount Vesuvius, towers over Pompeii from the north. The circumference of the wall that surrounded the city was almost two miles long. 
Pompeii was home to as many as 20,000 people. It was a typical Roman provincial town. When Vesuvius erupted, it first showered Pompeii with an enormous amount of volcanic debris. Ash and pumice rained down for over 18 hours. After that, the town was struck by a sudden surge of deadly pyroclastic flow. The entire city, together with 2,000 of its inhabitants who didn't manage to escape, was buried under 10 feet of ash. As the excavation work gradually removed volcanic ash from two-thirds of the site, amazing details of ancient Roman town life came to light. At the center was the main square called Pompey's Forum. Public buildings such as temples, a government court, and markets surrounded the square. A network of streets of varying sizes led from the Forum to crisscross the city. Roman streets had raised pedestrian walkways on two sides and a carriageway in the center. Ruts left in the stone pavement suggest that Pompeii streets were frequently used by heavily loaded carts. This is an ancient pedestrian crossing. Raised stepping stones placed at regular intervals made it easier for pedestrians to cross the carriageways whose surface was lower. Public water fountains like this one were installed all over the city to provide its residents with water 24 hours a day. There was a public water outlet at no more than a minute's walk distance from any home. The city was designed to allow all citizens to live in comfort. Two hundred and fifty years have passed since the ruins of Pompeii were first discovered, but excavation work still continues to this day. This is the latest excavation, the House of the Chase Lovers. Mules that were kept in this house were tied up and couldn't escape. They died where they lay, and that's how they were discovered. It's been 16 years since the excavation of this house started, and numerous artifacts found at the site provide a glimpse into the life of its residents. These are the things that we just found. The bones will be sent for expert analysis, but I guess that they belong to a cow the family had just eaten for lunch. We also found a pot that was used for cooking. It was a large pot and it was used on an open fire. You can still see the soot on the outside. Pompeii's greatest discovery, however, are the figures of people left just as they died 2,000 years ago. They are so detailed that you can even see the torment at the moment of death in their faces. Figures like these are strewn all over town. How could they have maintained their shape after all this time? The bodies of people who perished at Pompeii were buried in volcanic ash that hardened over time. After the bodies decayed, they left hollow spaces in the hardened ash. The cavities, in fact, became precise molds of the human figures that once occupied them. When archaeologists found the cavities in the course of their excavations and poured plaster into them, it was as if the dying moments of the long deceased came to life. The cast figures have enabled us to understand what happened to the people of Pompeii on the day of the volcanic eruption. Some families apparently chose to stay in their homes until the eruption subsided. 
Four figures were found huddled together in a small alcove. The mother held her children close until death overcame them. This child is believed to have been four years old. These two people seem to have been trying to protect each other as they died. They may have been lovers. A small lantern was found near their bodies. They appear to have been trying to escape, using the lantern to light their way through the darkness of the falling ash. Figures of many other citizens of Pompeii who lived 2,000 years ago have remained frozen in time. What was happening in the Roman Empire at the time of their death? How did it keep going? Rome was already a large city at the time. At the height of its power, ancient Rome had a population of one million. In 27 BC, Caesar's adopted son became the first Roman emperor under the title Augustus. 80 years later, Pompeii was thriving. The Roman Empire was enjoying its golden age. The empire was founded on overwhelming military power. Roman armies had conquered surrounding areas in a series of battles, rapidly expanding its territory. Eventually, the Roman Empire extended throughout most of Europe and into North Africa. By securing control over the Mediterranean, the empire gained fabulous wealth and became the world's first superpower. This mosaic is a symbolic representation of ethnic diversity under Roman imperial rule. Many very different ethnic groups lived in the vast territories incorporated in the empire. They were all treated equally, without discrimination. All became citizens. In order to govern such a vast population effectively, Roman emperors established new state institutions. They devised a unique way to placate the masses by offering them benefits and entertainment. The system bread and circuses is also known as bread and games. This fresco is an illustration of this political strategy. It depicts the distribution of free bread to Roman citizens. The empire ensured against popular discontent by providing its subjects with enough food so they wouldn't starve. It also provided entertainment in the form of circus games to keep them amused. At amphitheaters like this one, gladiators fought each other and wild animals to entertain the spectators. The bread and games strategy won the hearts of the people whose well-being it assured, and the empire used it to establish control over them. This system, made possible by the immense wealth built on the strength of a superior army, sustained the empire's lasting prosperity. The comforts of bread and games became available throughout the Roman Empire. Even citizens in remote provincial cities could enjoy an opulent lifestyle. The town of Pompeii was no exception. Well-built houses neatly lined its streets. Many were substantial stone mansions.
Each was built around a spacious inner courtyard to allow plenty of light into the rooms. This is a bathroom. Romans considered taking long, relaxing baths one of the greatest pleasures in life. Their enjoyment of leisurely bathing was enhanced by beautiful mosaics with which they decorated bathroom floors. They also covered room walls with colorful frescoes. The security that came with the daily provision of free bread left people with a surplus of time and money. This led to the creation of many splendid works of art. Until the day their city perished under volcanic ash, the people of Pompeii lived amid this splendor. But what occupied their minds? What did they do in their day-to-day -day lives? There are, actually, some pretty good clues as to how to answer these questions. They can be found in the graffiti created 2,000 years ago. Since paper was not widely available at that time, people used steel pens and nails to scratch notes about their experiences and thoughts on walls. Dr. Antonio Varoni is a leading expert on Pompeii's graffiti. Besides the graffiti of a personal nature, many announcements, advertisements, and public notices remain etched into city walls. Dr. Veroni has deciphered over 10,000 of the personal graffiti and public signs. One of the best things about doing research on graffiti is that they give us an immediate feel for the living environment and direct access into the daily lives of people. There's no need to look at old manuscripts or records. People's voices leap over 2,000 years of time and speak to us directly through the walls. Most of the personal graffiti were inscribed in entryways to homes. Here it is. In the hallway, that leads to this beautiful house. It's a welcome message that everyone can see. Let's take a look at it. Akipeg vos dedi tecum chorus. It means, remember the dances we enjoyed together. It's a message to someone with whom the writer danced. Something like a love note, a valentine. A man developed a passion for a woman and left a message in the hallway to her home to ask her if she would meet him. It's a charming custom. The woman then used the same wall to reply. It could be yes or no, but in most cases, the answer was probably maybe. Besides exchanges between lovers, many other types of messages remain on the city's walls. Meeting appointments, missing person announcements, notices to neighbors. Walls seem to have provided ancient city dwellers with a good medium for communication. This is a portrait of a Pompeian couple that was painted on a house wall.
Their contented expressions suggest that they were leading a life free of worries and stress. More graffiti can be found on the walls of shops that line city streets. This is a pub that served the ancient Roman equivalent of fast food. Customers could eat and drink casually around the counter. The sunken pottery vats were filled with wine and food. Paintings of the pub's customers decorate the walls of a small inner chamber. Above the picture, somebody has scribbled, Give me some cold water. It was probably a customer who'd had too much wine. This is a picture of a barmaid holding a cup and a jug of wine. The writing above the picture is a dialogue between her and two customers. Over here. No, it's mine. Take it, whoever wants it, or I will give it to someone else. People gathered in pubs to enjoy a good chat and play games. Judging by the graffiti, the atmosphere in Pompeii was bustling with activity. This is the excavation site where Dr. Verone currently works, a bakery. Some very interesting graffiti were left here on the wall above the counter. They're numbers that must have been noted by the owner of the bakery. Take, take a look at it. This row of numbers says 22, and then 6, and 8, and 3. In this row, there's 8, 5, 8 again, and 9 and six. What do these numbers mean? The graffiti, though small, seem to suggest a heartwarming daily scene. A boy comes to the bakery to buy bread and tells the owner that his father will pay for it tomorrow. The owner notes the debt on the wall to keep the account straight. He will add up the numbers later. Number notations are found on many shop walls. It's believed that they were kept for charge accounts. Pompeii seems to have enjoyed an abundant supply of all manner of goods. Its residents were able to obtain just about anything they desired. 